Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Wallace. I hope everybody's doing A-OK -okay and um, your families are doing A-OK. -okay. I think we're going to go about this uh, the best that we can and uh, it's certainly um, I think a little bit different having class in your living room or wherever you happen to be um, and it'll take a little bit of a learning curve but we'll kind of work together on it so you can keep me posted about what's working what isn't working um, we'll try to make it you know as interactive as possible I think we'll kind of learn a lot along the way um, and uh, we'll try to allow some time for you to work on some problems and also kind of learn some new information uh, do a variety of different things each day okay so this is uh, Mrs. Wallace from the couch giving this a go and uh, good to be with you okay um, so this video that I'm introducing uh, first is really just a little bit of a quick uh, reminder about some of the things related to Monopoly um, you may feel like you have a pretty com good comfort zone with Monopoly at this point at least the beginning parts of it why marginal revenue is less than demand what about elasticity and efficiency and if that's the case and you remember it really well from class make this like an optional uh, introductory video for you but um, in case you wanted to go back to a few things it's useful to have okay so um, that's the purpose of this video it's uh, designed to be short and primarily address elasticity um, and uh, e efficiency related to monopoly. So everyone, one of the topics that is a really important one is the idea of elasticity. And for us, elasticity is something important uh, from the get-go for a couple of uh, reasons, right? Remember that elasticity is all about the percentage change in uh, quantity above the percentage change in price, right? So think of this as like the quantity effect versus the price effect, right? If we were to lower the price or raise the price, if something's elastic, the quantity bump is much greater uh, than the price effect. If something's inelastic, you know, you manipulate the price up or down, the quantity effect is very, very small, okay? Uh, why does this matter? Um, it matters because now we're interested in total revenue, okay? And so a monopolist that's interested in total revenue Revenue is going to find its total revenue to be price times the quantity and so if you're in a position where you lower the price okay so you're lowering the price um, that could be bad for your total revenue right if you lower the price what happens to your total revenue uh, but if the quantity effect is much greater it's likely that we have an elastic good by definition and if you lower the price if the quantity effect is greater your total revenue will increase okay monopolists like that right they have to reduce the price in order for there to be um, greater and greater and greater quantity of goods uh, sold right a monopolist has a downward sloping demand curve so in order to sell more of something they have to lower the price if they lower the price in the elastic range okay ultimately when they lower the price their total revenue will increase okay by definition how do we know where the elastic range is compared to the inelastic range well we can very easily look at our marginal revenue curve okay the marginal revenue curve up until the eighth unit say this was selling lemonades and the individual selling you're at a lemonade stand and you're selling the first the second the third the fourth the fifth and every single time you decide to sell in another lemonade you're lowering the price for all of your lemonade so you decide ahead of time to sell six lemonades maybe at a price of five dollars instead of selling two lemonades at a much higher price okay every time you lower the price as long as your marginal revenue is positive you're in the elastic section despite the fact that you're going to lower and lower and lower prices your total revenue is increasing the marginal revenue that is um, decreasing here is still a positive number it's above zero so it's adding it's the slope of your total revenue curve so it's not until your marginal revenue is zero you know you produce the eighth lemonade you don't make any additional revenue and your total revenue at that point is at its peak so if you were asked you know where is the total revenue the greatest well if you sold eight lemonades your total revenue would be the greatest does that mean that's where you maximize your profit no <laughs> that's going to be where MR equals MC but sometimes for commission purposes or other reasons we're curious about where total revenue is going to be the greatest and that would be at eight what we don't have on this graph at all is any cost 
information, um, costs may be higher at the quantity of eight, right, than they are someplace else. But we can make a conclusion that the monopolist is going to produce in this elastic range. Once you get to the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, the twelfth unit, this is like bad idea, right? Because once the monopolist produces here, if they lower the price to get those greater quantities, they're going to see their total revenue decrease, okay? We also know that costs are going to be greater at greater quantities. So not only would they see their total revenue decrease in the inelastic range, they'd also be subject at greater quantities to higher costs, okay? So bad idea from the get-go, okay? Okay, so one other thing to consider about monopoly is just what it looks like with profits and losses. I know that we did this in class, and I think a lot of you are really comfortable with this. Just remember, we're looking at MR equals MC as the space. Like, in this case, we're not interested so much in whether or not the monopolist is going to produce in this section because it's elastic or not produce, you know, in this part of the demand curve because maybe it's inelastic after marginal revenue uh, is negative. You know, we know specifically where profit-maximizing monopolist is going to produce find that point it's big bright and yellow here where mr equals mc and we know that the um, quantity produced will be 20 okay so if we look at that quantity of 20 the monopolist will be able to price as high as ten dollars uh, because we know that uh, consumers are willing to pay ten dollars if 20 uh, is produced um, some people are willing to pay more than ten dollars but um, this quantity would be uh, sold if the price was ten dollars uh, knowing the price is ten dollars is half of the battle because we know the price times the quantity is our total revenue so we have a total revenue of two hundred dollars if we um, take that total revenue and we kind of are also interested in our total cost um, if we make 20 lemonades our per unit cost would be nine dollars so our cost would be this box here our total cost and the difference between our total revenue and our total cost would be twenty dollars if our total revenue is uh, two hundred dollars twenty times ten and our total cost is nine dollars times twenty a hundred and eighty dollars the um, part that is left this profit right here the gap between the price and the ATC times 20 units we know that this is a monopolist making a profit of course a monopolist making a loss would find that they would um, have their ATC uh, maybe way up here um, that's actually not ideal like way up here you know for a monopoly making a loss um, MR equals MC is the same but the um, you know the uh, ATC would be greater uh, the other uh, thing, of course, is to keep in mind your ATC um, can also be on the graph. And if you're looking at, I'm sorry, AVC, you're looking at AVC also suggesting whether or not the firm would shut down. As long as the price of $10 is greater than your minimum ABC, this is a firm that will not shut down. Okay, guys, so the general question about this is really asking, um, you know, are monopolies efficient? And um, you probably remember this from class and probably know the answer is, you know, no, right? Monopolies are largely not uh, efficient. Um, of course, there are some uh, caveats to that, right? So we know that monopolies are generally not allocatively efficient, unlike perfect competition. And that's what this section is about, showing in what way monopolies are inefficient. We know they're going to have, for example, a deadweight loss. At the same time, um, the uh, one caveat is that perfectly price discriminating monopolies are going to actually be um, efficient. There will be, um, uh, you know, no deadweight loss um, for a variety of reasons, and we'll look at that model. So, you know, hands down, the question is a little sketchy. Um, it's not clear, you know, are all monopolies efficient? Um, you know, definitely not. Many are not, but um, there could be an occasion where they are. Okay, so a couple of things to remember um, about a monopolist, and we'll look at the graph next, and you can kind of, you know, just check these things off. So this is just a little bit of the text that might help you um, compared to perfect competition, right? Perfect competition was allocatively efficient and productively efficient. Allocatively efficient because P was equal to MC. Productively efficient because P was equal to minimum uh, ATC. 
Okay, so those two things are allocatively or productive efficient. A monopolist is going to charge a higher price, right? It has the ability to price up to the demand curve, so it will charge a much higher price. Here's our demand curve. Because MR is always less than demand, the intersection where MR equals MC will always be uh, lower, but the demand curve, which is way up here, will enable the monopolist to price uh, higher. They often are going to produce less than perfect competition, so that means they're not allocated efficient price does not equal MC um, they produce at higher costs we uh, can look at this a little bit but they are not going to be productively efficient where MR equals MC up to the demand curve we are not going to see uh, a monopolist that is producing where it's uh, because the marginal cost curve is here where minimum ATC uh, is is going to be far from where the monopolist is producing so they will produce at a higher point along their ATC um, and also monopolists and this is a little bit debatable but um, lots of people would argue that you know the lack of competition in and of itself um, you know kind of reduces the pressure uh, for innovation so a monopolist you know is less likely to um, use a whole bunch of new technologies in an effort to reduce uh, they might try to reduce costs but they're not really looking to uh, do things at such a level um, because there's not so much competition um, there are some debates about that some uh, modern economists suggest maybe in a um, example of uh, like a tech company maybe monopolies have some R&D capabilities and some uh, like kind of monetary investment ability to actually innovate at a higher level um, but oftentimes it's not necessarily uh, a true monopoly in those situations so you know we can have the debate about Google later on but it's um, you know not necessarily that there are complete barriers to entry they are trying to maintain their position as an innovative um, type of firm and because of that threat of competition um, they might have the interest in innovating so uh, there's a variety of different ways that we can look at kind of the concept of competition and how likely it is to enter in there are different types of barriers to entry and different ways monopolies might benefit from those barriers to entry um, but just to um, so here's uh, a little bit of just what this looks like you know on the graph and um, this is something again we looked at in class so we'll just kind of keep this remember that you know you're looking at this concept here of consumer and producer surplus this is um, really key because that is a measure of efficiency okay so total welfare would be met if the perfect competitor was producing and this was just a regular supply curve here where the marginal cost curve is and there was uh, the demand curve kind of equals the marginal benefit curve this would be the quantity right here where the perfect competitor would be producing um, this would also be the price so if you had a perfect competitor this um, whole uh, area here this would be the price kind of where uh, the, pr the uh, price and uh, demand curve intersect here this whole thing would be consumer surplus you know all of the consumers that are paying greater than this price you know would all be getting a good deal because they're willing to pay this price producers would also have some surplus because they're getting this price but yet they um, would be willing to make the good for this price okay uh, in the case of monopoly we actually lose some consumer surplus the consumer surplus that was right here okay this kind of like little trapezoid area right right here that area um, would uh, go to different things no longer consumer surplus now because the monopolist is producing where MR equals MC and the price is here consumer surplus is much smaller right consumer surplus is all the way up here producer surplus is going to be down here and we have this now new um, inefficiency which is measured in deadweight loss okay deadweight loss is going to be underneath the demand curve um, kind of above the marginal cost curve right and we're looking at this gap between the demand and marginal revenue um, and you know we're really expressing with this deadweight loss <laughs> the um, total welfare that's loss the loss consumer and producer surplus that used to be there these this is a result of transactions that are no longer happening the monopoly is producing maybe five lemonades Okay, guys, so this last slide, I'm not going to do a whole lot of drawing on here. It's kind of a busy slide as it is. 
But just, you know, note this is your perfect competitor. So if you're, like, just looking to review where consumer surpluses and producer surpluses, you know, all of those supply and demand graphs that we did earlier in the year with, like, all the reasons for the shifts in demand and shifts in supply, all of that is always looking at perfectly competitive market, right? We're not putting the firm here. We're just looking at the market. The monopoly, which is the market, right, is um, in a position that's very, very different, okay, where um, here we've kind of done it again where we've superimposed the quantity that was perfectly competitive, um, and we see the deadweight loss, okay? And this box here is only just showing some of the lost consumer surplus. Consumers are largely the big issue, um, and we see that um, in the model in terms of consumers getting hurt by monopoly. Uh, but you have this uh, slide in case you want to check it out, uh, graph it, uh, maybe draw it in your notebook. Okay, guys, thanks very much. And uh, next we'll look at some of the free response questions uh, so we can go over those answers. Okie doke, have a good rest of the day.